Hello, everybody. This talk is a little unusual. I just always want to come here, but I've been busy. This is Harper Harp. I just want to come to say and give a shout out to black people. I want to give a shout out to black people, you know, because we've been doing a lot. Like we've been we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. We done done a lot. And a lot has went on. But black people, descendants of slaves especially, and that's who I am, a descendant of slavery. I shout out to you. We got some big hearts. You know, we got some really big, we got some really big, big hearts. I mean, the way we protect people, we love people, you know, we try to help people. We don't even want to hurt people's feelings. We let people live a certain kind of way in front of us. And then, you know, we just, we carry people. We carry people. And we don't really carry ourselves. We don't do ourselves. We don't take care of ourselves like that. But we we definitely carry other people. I mean, it, it's crazy how sometimes, you know how black people, we always try to make people cool with us and stuff. And we think everybody cool with us, you know, because we, you know, we we are we world tree and setters and all that. We we cool people, so we think everybody cool with us because people be dapping us and stuff, right? And the immigrants and the Puerto Ricans and all that, and we love them, y'all know that. We be loving people and all that stuff, but they don't really be that cool with us. They don't really be that cool with us. They'll be talking about us and stuff when they get in their spirit saying stuff like. You know, I, I'm glad my child not black, looking at their children. My daughter pretty. She got long hair. He got long hair. You know, they'll say something like that. You know, black people wish they looked this good. They say stuff like that. When I ask Ali, black people do look good. And we are the world trendsetters. We are beautiful people, right? But now, sometimes people get intelligent and they don't say that. So we can't say people saying that all the time. But this is what they say whenever they feel like it. Like, you know, black people, we like we get dumped on, but it's normal for you to do that to a black person, right? Normal. It's normal. So I'm giving a shout out to us because we have normalized something that nobody else has to do, had to do. And we're gonna get our reparations. We are. We're going we're gonna to continue to fight. But we are the grandmothers, the grandfathers. We're the mama and daddy to this country. Regardless if we got any wealth, everybody need us. We your mama. We your daddy. We, are, we the fathers and mothers and fathers of founders of this country, of the United States. We are black people to say descendants. We, are, we foster your bull, um, uh, your bull crap. We let you in our space and take care of you. Because we know you probably don't know no better. And you probably, those who do know better, we hold you accountable. I'm not going to lie. I'm not in the business of not holding people accountable who know no better. But there's a lot of folks that we step in front of and we help. Now, immigration this last time, I didn't I didn't help y'all this last time. I wasn't trying to help y'all. When Trump was in office, I, wasn't, I didn't vote for Joe Biden. I, I didn't help y'all this time because that's who they were trying to help. They were trying to help immigration, and I'm not going to let you forget it, black people. But I'm giving you a shout out. They, 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 I wasn't going to help y'all this time. I decided that I wasn't going to help you. You know, too many folks done ran over me in this country, and I took my money, my, my tax dollars, my inheritance, I took my inheritance and done built houses, got programs and cars and ways to make it. I'm not going to, this time I said I wasn't going to do it. So I didn't do it. And I probably won't do it next time. Because you have a way to get things on your own. I got to help myself. Because if I don't do nothing by myself, me and Tyrone and Ricky and, uh, you know, and, and Cornbread and me and Tyrone and Ricky and and and, and uh, TJ and all them, we're we not going to be able to have businesses. We ain't going to be able to barbecue and talk like y'all talking. If I keep on helping y'all, we'll be looking up at y'all. We'll be looking up at y'all starving with an empty stomach while some other, while, 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 um, while um, they, uh, one of us getting, you know, harmed by the police or some other citizen. 
if, if, if I keep helping you, that that's what's going to happen to me. You know what I'm saying? So with Pookie Ray Ray getting shot by the police and being me and Tyrone can't barbecue, right? Because we locked out of business camaraderie and we the smarter people in the facility that we serve with. We can't keep on doing that. So we're going to need our check cut for this country and our blood sacrifice. We're going to need our reparation for the blood sacrifice of our grandfather. And the fact that you took my grandmother and y'all had an affair and you separated me as a Negro, which, hey, I'm a Negro, and I don't mind. And then you went on ahead and kept all the inheritances for the white side, the white side of the family. And they got hundreds of acres of land and they got houses they can't, they, they can't live in and rent them out and generational wealth and going on trips. And these people are global, you know, and we left here without even a remembering, not let alone uh, us having it to possess to ourselves. So this is where it stops. And, and right now, at this time, historically, they have not cut the check for reparations. They have not gave us the laws and mandate for reparations. At this time, historically, this is uh, 2022. This is July um, the 9th, 2022, about 2.30 p.m. in North Atlanta. They have not cut the check for the descendants of slaves, but they will. They will cut the check. They ain't got no choice. The science points to it, and we are deserving of it. In America, original sin, she's crying out. She's embarrassed, and she should be. We are the America's children. We are the natives of America. We're more native than any group that's in this country in terms of what it means to be an American, except for the actual natives that's here, because everything basically is in our bloods throughout slavery and hardship. However, they have to remember the birth of a nation. You're still talking to the heir right now, Harper Hawk, me right now. I'm the heir of the birth of this nation, of the whole beginning. I'm an heir. And I heard them talk about it. And I saw what they did. And I saw what they experienced. And I still talk to my mother. And there's people right now that in my family that are older enough to still tell me things that was in cotton fields. Sure cropping right after cotton. So it hasn't been that long ago. My whole family and my lineage, we leading the world trend right now for everybody and still have been corrected in community. We got things taken away from us. Well, people, you know, they, so I'm giving us a shout out, but I want you to know that I want us to be reprimanded for the right reason, for the greater good. I want us to be abreast and abrupt so we can continue. We're in a fight to clear ourselves and to have our package delivered to us and our tax dollars. And the United States have a form of apology according to human life and, and human asset, according to financial comfortability and false imprisonment of the slaves and the descendants of slaves, according to wars and history of wars that caused dispositioning and dysfunctioning. This is what we say. It's too, uh, this is too prestigious. You can't ignore it, you'll be embarrassed. And you're dealing with political analysts and people who are talented, the most talented people in the entire world are the American Negro. So don't you forget that out there. That's who we are. And we will get what we deserve. And we are going to get it. So I appreciate you joining me on this talk. But yeah, me and Tyrone, we're going to need our money. Me and Ricky, you know, me and Andre, all of us, we're going to need our money. Me and, uh, I'm going to have to, me and Mr. Mr. Uh, Uncle Cecil, we're going to need our money so we can build and have a garden and live comfortably and not let money rule us because we got it. When a person got something, they don't think of money as something they don't know how to have. Once you get it, you start to think and anchor differently. So they tell black people, you're not going to use it right like we some kids. Once you get anchored in money and your children see you with it, your ideas change. You change as a person. Don't believe that dang, that dang stuff, black people. When you get money, you change. You become used to something different, another idea, another way of life. You won't commit so many crimes. You won't be in province. That is a lie. That is what's got you in province, having no wealth, 
Wealth is protection and safety in America. That's why we under and living under America in Provost and different things are happening because you're not, you're not connected to any real safety and any real comfortable choices. And you're going to be having weird actions and dysfunctional actions. So follow us political scientists and thank you for joining me. This is Harper Harper.